Hello my loves, what's up, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a new pick a card reading. This one is specifically a yes or no question. I'm super stoked about it, so just think of a question in your head and then look at the cards and find the one that is calling to you the most based on your question. This is a yes or no question. We're gonna try to get as much information as possible in this. If you guys are new to pick a card readings, I'm gonna give you guys a quick little rundown of how they work. So over here we have pile number one, two, three, four, and five. So you can take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards. Then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And then you guys can skip ahead and watch your personal reading for your yes or no question. I'm super excited about this. And if you guys like to choose with crystals below the cards, let's pop some crystals on there. Right meow. All right, my loves, if you guys like to choose with crystals, here are our crystal options. So over here we have some rose quartz, and then over here we have some amazonite, and then we have some aqua aura quartz, and then over here we have some milky agate, and then over here we have some adventuring. So take a moment, pause the video if you'd like to find the pile that you are the most drawn towards, and then once you're done choosing your pile, you can then scroll down to the comment box or the description box to find the timestamp that's linked to your specific card. And without further ado, I also just wanna add in a quick disclaimer actually before hopping into this. Um, this is re uh, reading upon the current energies, what you're currently uh, gravitating towards, things like that. This is changeable at any time, so if you ever hear anything that you do not like, just so you guys know, this is a reading upon the current energies and you have the destiny and fate in your own hands. You can change your destiny and fate at any time because that is all up to you and you have the power within you to change anything at any time, my love. And Tarot is just bringing awareness to our current situation and the current things that we're attracting towards us. So with that being said, without further ado, let's hop right into today's video. All right, so group number one, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your reading all about your yes or no question. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group number one, this is what we have for you guys. We have the Empress, then we have the Five of Cups being reversed, then we have the Ace of Pentacles reversed, and we have the Six of Wands being reversed. So immediately, just because of these reversals that are over here, this lets me know that your um, question is a no. Whenever we have these ones upside down, this is the answer of no, or it is at least delayed or not within your reach at this time. But the fact that we have the Empress over here, this is saying that it is time to birth a new idea. This is time for a new inspiration, a new direction, and it's time to let go of the old. So whenever the aces come reverse, that always signifies a no to whatever question that you're asking, but it does look like there's a lot of opportunity for a new direction over here. So however that translates towards your question, there is some sort of new direction, new energy coming in that you can absolutely birth something brand new rather than continuing on this old thing, doing the old stuff, old routines, hanging on to the past, hanging on to a certain outcome, because this could be hanging on to a certain outcome that you have in mind, but maybe it's saying that certain outcome isn't going to be the exact path for you, but there's a new path emerging. As we can see this rainbow, there's a new path emerging over here for you guys. So what I would say for you guys, pal number one, it might not look the way that you currently see it to look. It does look like it's happening. There is some sort of thing that's happening with this, but it might not be the outcome that you had your eyes set on. It could be an outcome that's similar that actually is better for you because the Empress, I will let you guys know right now, Empress is major arcana. These ones are minor arcana cards. So whatever you're focused on right now isn't going to bring you the fulfillment and whatever it is that you're seeking. There is a new path that is emerging that's going to bring you so much more than you could have ever imagined. So now is time to let let go of the past, let go of the old stuff, and allow this new path to emerge. The next few cards that we have over here, we have Neptune, Jupiter, and Mercury. We have three planets right here, you guys. This is amazing. Absolutely love all of these planets that just came up for you guys. So Neptune, dreams. This is time to get back to your dream world. This is time to get back to your imagination, to your fantasies, because Neptune is also all about fantasies. It's ruled by Pisces, um, or I guess it's the ruler of Pisces, I should say. But this is all about, okay, there's an illusion that's in front of you right now, because Neptune is also, also about illusions, right? So Right now we're attached to maybe a specific outcome and we have the illusion that that's the one for us. But what this is actually saying is that there's a new path emerging that we might not see. And there might, there might be some sort of failure in this certain direction, something that doesn't work out, but it's not exactly a failure because there's something new popping up that was better than this one anyway. And so yes, this is time to get past the illusion that this was the only route because there's this new route popping up and yeah, this is about getting back to that fantasy, getting back to your dreams, the things that you desire um, so deeply. 
Then we also have Jupiter here of expansion. So you wouldn't have been able to expand otherwise. This here was limiting, whereas the Empress, this is whew, new paths coming in, new energies coming in, new expansion coming in. This is amazing. This is a roll of the dice, so it's also kind of taking risks and chances and things like that. So this is about rolling the dice and you are actually getting a better option. So uh, surely, you know, this certain thing isn't gonna work out, that's fine. But we're getting this over here. So this is so much better. And then we also have Mercury of Communications. So this is something that I think is gonna happen quite quickly in your life over the next few months, let's say. Because Mercury is usually quite fast paced. Um, and what I would get from Mercury is that these are new thoughts, new ideas that are coming to you so quickly and listening to that. Also communication, so you might even get new ideas from new people or just opening up communication in some way will help you reach this opportunity rather than hanging on to this old opportunity. So this is about opening up those communication lines to bring back in this new path or to bring in this new path, I should say and to be able to let go of the old. So this is, yeah, we're opening ourselves up, you guys. Um, this over here is ruled by Sagitt or rule Sagittarius and also Pisces. So we have two Piscean cards over here. So traditionally Jupiter also rules over Pisces. And then Mercury over here rules over Gemini and Virgo. So those might speak out to you in some sort of way. You guys you might have some of those signs in your chart. With that being said, let's see what else we get over here. We have the Ruby Star Flow. I embody my authentic and sensual essence. Beautiful. So this is embodying your passions. Um, Ruby is definitely about awakening that root um, chakra. And so this is about feeling like you are secure. This is about financial freedom, financial abundance, also your own own security. You can also deal with relationships and things like that. But this is about embodying whatever is passionate to you. And then we do also have the finale, of course. <laughs> wow, you guys are about to go through some big change about ending an old thing and then beginning this new, um, new thing over here. So finale, after the storm, I emerge a shiny new star. So yes, I do think that something isn't going to work out for you. Your immediate answer is no, but there's something better coming in. So there's a finale of something going on in your, in your guys' life right now, I would definitely say, but this um, will offer up a new beginning and things like that. So that's all looking gorgeous so far. Pile number one, this is awesome. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle this deck right here. We got an immediate fly out, my goodness. So we have dance. Allow yourself some fun each day, just as the sun dances with the moon each night. Gorgeous, guys. That is gorgeous. What a gorgeous message. Okay. Let's get some more. I feel like one just flipped up. Yes, it did. We also have joy in here and we have cleanse. Okay. So I'm just going to take out all these ones right here. So let's see you guys. This one right here says spread seeds of joy like a wildflower and no doubt you will revel in the result so this is a time of spreading joy spreading happiness not getting down on whatever's not working out for you this is about letting your joy shine and that's what's going to bring in this new path so dancing joy things like that just having fun no matter what obstacles you reach will bring you this new path for this thing that you're desiring to birth into existence and then we have cleanse over here. Wash your weary spirit clean and take a walk in the wooden glades. So yes, we're letting go. This is a finale, cleanse, finale, all the things like that is about letting go of this old thing that wasn't meant for you anyway. And then we also have flow, which is so interesting because we have flow over here as well. So this is going with the flow. And uh, the first words here says go with the flow. As water trickles down a stream, do not hurry. So this isn't about being in a rush. Um, so some of you guys, there could be an opportunity that's not exactly going to work out the best for you, but this isn't about, um, getting ahead of the finish line so quickly because maybe this thing isn't working out. Like I said, there's something way better waiting for you. So this is going with the flow, understanding that, okay, this thing isn't working out, but that's because it was minor stuff. Anyway, you might look at it as a big thing right now as a big opportunity. That's like not really working out or whatever the case may be, but guess what? There's something so much bigger and so much better coming because we have that Empress again, which is a major arcana card. So there's something so much bigger that is without, a, without, um, that's not in your vision yet, let's say. It's not in your vision yet, but as you go with the flow, you're gonna be brought over here. You're being brought like a rainbow, like a stream headed in towards the abundance. Empress is all about abundance, being fruitful, things like that. Things coming in, da 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 da, all that jazz. So that's a beautiful card over there. I'm also going to shuffle, which deck should we take? I am feeling 
like this one right here. I haven't used this one in a little bit. So we're gonna shuffle this deck right here and let's get any more information on here and then let's go into our Astrid dice for you guys. Okay, perfect, <laughs> look at that. Okay, so Paradox makes total sense coming up for you guys right now. Um, so Paradox, this is about, you know, both ways are correct. So it could be this juxtaposition, basically paradox. It's more paradox, not really just juxtaposition, but like it means that both ways are correct. This is correct for happening, even though it's like not, this isn't the correct path. It's correct that you still went down this and did this. It serves some sort of purpose. So it's a paradox that it was no matter what decision, no matter what thing happens to you, if things aren't working out or they are working out, it's a paradox because both are serving you. Both are purposeful. It's not like you missed out on any time. You're not wasting any time. You haven't wasted any time. It all served a divine purpose for you. And then we also have nature. So this is us heading back into where we belong. This is us finding where we belong. So when I look at this card, the immediate thing that I think of is you finding where you belong and this wasn't quite it, but that thing is coming for you. It is absolutely, absolutely coming for you. So do not worry, my loves. It is absolutely coming. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take our zodiac sign. Let's try to get any last info on this reading for you guys. All right, so we have Saturn over here. We have Libra. And it looks like we have the 10th house over here. So some of you guys might be asking about career because Saturn and the 10th house, very Capricornian kind of stuff over here, um, which is definitely all about career and things like that. Oh, and then Capricorn decided to like pop up when I accidentally dropped the dice there while I was trying to move it. <laughs> but we normally have Libra right here. So we're gonna take both of those into account. So some of you guys might have some um, Capricornian energy in you since we have lots of Capricorn kind of stuff coming up. We also have Libra over here, but yes, so. Saturn in Libra in the 10th house. This could be about relationships as well because Libra is about relationships. So I feel like for most of you guys, this um, question was either about a relationship or a career type thing. Um, but when we have these cards right here, even if not, this is still relevant to you guys, just so you know. But this is about this dedication, being dedicated to your path no matter what, making the right connections, networking, things like that, really starting to believe in yourself and find balance in working and also being able to enjoy yourself as well. So don't get too caught up in it. Anytime that you have a failure, um, Saturn and Capricorn, the 10th house, that is not an area of giving up. That is not an area of accepting failure. That's an area of we just keep going and going and going until I'm done climbing the mountain. It's not like you walk up halfway through the mountain and you're like, mm, this path didn't quite go. No, that's when you find a new path and you keep your climb. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys. Pile number one, I hope that answered your guys' question. I hope that all made sense for you guys. If you guys enjoyed this reading, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this. And if so, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, group number two, my loves. If you guys chose this pile, this is gonna be your reading, so let's hop right into it. All right, you guys, pile two. Here's what we got for you guys. We have the four of cups being reversed and we have the five of swords being reversed, ace of swords reversed, justice reversed, and then the sun upright. Um, so immediately getting some vibes, like I said to pile number one, whenever we have an ace that's reversed and we're asking yes or no, aces being reversed is always a no, but we have a lot of interesting other cards around here. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little bit about why this is and some good news over here with the sun card because the sun is such a good card to come up in any reading at all. This is so good. Um, so what I want you guys to know, and sometimes depending on the question, getting a no can actually be a great thing depending on the question being asked, but over here, it does look like we have a no and it looks like there's some sort of like, uh, like an energy that just doesn't match up. So whatever this question is, it does look like there's something that's out of alignment and that's why it's not exactly matching up. That's why it's not being created. That's why it's, you know, not. It's not happening essentially, but what this is, is that there's a new opportunity coming in because the four of cups being reversed is actually such a good card to come up being reversed. This is like one of the best cards to be reversed in my opinion, because when it's upright, he is looking, you know, at his fallen or I guess in this picture, they're not exactly fallen over, but he's looking at these cups that he's like, I don't really want these ones. And he's like kind of just bored with them. And he's like, nah, I'm, I'm over it. But if he just turned around, he'd realize that the universe is giving him the cup of his dreams, but he's too focused on what he doesn't want to notice that there's the opportunity right there to get what he does want, right? But when this card is reversed, that is the story when he turns around his shoulder and he sees this opportunity awaiting him. So for you guys, I would say that yes, you're 
immediate answer is no, but it looks like there's some goodness coming your way. And it does look like something that's in alignment to you. You're going to finally notice it and see it soon. Something that is in alignment to you. But this one right here just doesn't seem like it's in alignment. Like we have justice being reversed, which is this imbalance. We're not seeing eye to eye. It's just not on the same level as we are. Um, and it's just like, there's just, it doesn't, it doesn't meet, right? The energy does not match up. There's no, magnetism trying to match this thing up and then five of swords being reversed as well is kind of like this disharmony i guess and then the ace of swords being reversed is a no this is a direct no where we have to cut something out of our lives we have to let it go and we have to let go of old mindsets old thinking patterns old things that we were attached to da 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 da, da. um and then we have to look around our shoulder and notice that there's this beautiful opportunity waiting for us. And that's where the sun comes in, in this answer for you guys, because there's something so abundant that's waiting for you. You guys are also very similar to pile number one's reading. So I don't know if you guys were attracted to both of those, but this one's quite similar, although it's a little bit different. Uh, but this sun card over here, this is all abundance, but we have to look over our shoulder and stop focusing on the negatives. We have to stop focusing on the lack. We have to stop focusing on this imbalance. We have to know that we are completely whole and worthy already. And once we get into alignment with that energy, that is when this blossoms into a yes, but we have to embody that self-worth, that self-confidence, like the sun, which is, you know, Leo, um, this is about embodying the confidence, not caring what anyone else thinks of you and realizing that you are completely whole and worthy and complete on your own and things like that. That is, that is this card, you guys, okay? So this is about going with the flow a little bit. You guys also did choose Amazonite, which comes from the Amazon River. And this is about, you know, choosing to go with that flow. Okay, you guys, it's the flow. So with that being said, let's talk about our next three cards that we have over here. So. Let's see you guys. We have Virgo, the third house and Gemini, which is very interesting. These are all mercurial because the third house is Gemini. So we have two Gemini things over here. We also have Virgo. So Virgo, the alchemist. So this is about taking things that were once maybe blah. You know, the alchemist takes lead and turns it into gold. So you're taking something that was once blah and making it into the perfect opportunity to get, to garner abundance. And so old mindsets, old things that were holding you back, things like that. It is time to blossom them, to realize your self-worth and do things in and go for it because right now it looks like it's a no because we're too focused on the lack or the um, or the I can't or the I'm not worthy or things like that. So Virgo takes that and alchemizes it into gold, which is the sun. Literally, gold is the sun. They're the same. Uh, uh, not they're, they're not literally the same, but when we're talking about um, in alchemy, it's represented by the sun. So anyway. Yes, this is about going through that healing, things like that. And then we also have the third house, which is perception. So this is ruled by Gemini. So this could be talking about your mindsets. Once again, it's very mercurial. And we have Ace of Swords over here, which is all about thinking and communication. So this is about getting your communication and thinking on track with what you want rather than having it in disharmony. I'm also going to put this card over here to get better um, alignment over here. But yes, so this is about getting your thoughts and everything like that in order, um, meeting the right connections, networking, things like that. Then we also have Gemini, which is basically the exact same thing as the third house over here. Um, and with Gemini, this is definitely just realizing that there's a dualistic way of looking at this, okay? You could look at it in the negative, or you could look at it in the positive and depending which way you face is which road that you go down. Cause imagine you're at a crossroads. If you keep thinking like, Oh, I can't. And I lack you're walking down that path and you're creating that to be true because you're focusing more energy towards that. Whereas if you change right now, you're always at a crossroads at any time you could choose to go this way and be more positive and be, um, worthy, whole and complete and just decide that and focus energy towards that and you'll be building that and that will begin to build. So there's a dualistic way of looking at this situation. Whatever you guys ask for, there's a dualistic thing here. So you could have it this way or you could have it this way. It really depends on your own mindset. Oh, and then look at that. Look at that. Look at our next cards right here. We literally have wishcraft. I attract a steady flow of abundance. So this is about making a wish. So hold up guys, pause the video and set your intention and your wish into the universe right now. Go grab a pen and a paper, write it down, write it down on your phone if you don't have one, whatever the case is, go and say it out loud to the universe what it is that you want and begin to feed that energy rather than the other energy. And then look at that, we also have the mystic. I weave magic and surrender to the universe. So weave your magic and let 
the universe guide you towards that. So it's about letting go as well. So this is about making a wish and trusting in the universe. So weave your magic, make that wish. It's all magic and then surrender it to the universe. Leave it up to the universe to guide you and create that perfect um, outcome for you. So that's that and let's, um, with that being said, let's go ahead and take these cards right here and let's see any more information for you guys. Pile number two, yes or no question. Pile number two, let's see. All right, there we go. Let's see, we have opportunities and we, <laughs> guys, if you didn't pause the video to make a wish, please go do it. You literally have the wish card coming up again. This is some wishcraft over here, guys. Geez, look at you guys. You guys are magical pile number two. So opportunities unfurl like a fern, even without warm sunlight. So even if there's no positivity around you, even if there's no sight for you to attain this goal, even if you don't know how, unfurl like a fern, even without warm sunlight. So even if there's nothing positive right now, unfurl like a fern, start smiling, make your wish, claim it baby, because that is going to be what brings that opportunity to you. Make a wish with a dandelion in the wind. So you don't actually have to do exactly that, but I mean, if you feel called to do that, go ahead, but make your wish. This is just talking about claiming it and putting it out there, okay? And we also have, this talks about wind, which is very interesting because Gemini, third house, very wind-esque things. We have Ace of Swords, which is all about air. So lots of air sign kind of stuff happening right now. Um, and this could mean literally speaking it. So when we have a lot of air stuff coming up, this is about you speaking out your dream. It doesn't mean you need to say it out loud to like anyone, just even if you're alone right now, say it. Say your dream, claim it, and watch the opportunities unfold for you. Okay, my love? This is beautiful so far, and I feel, so far. Um, I feel like this is like a very magical reading right now, and I love it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle this deck right here before going into our Astro Dice. And let's see what we get. So pile number two. All right, so we have another card talking about surrender, so leaving it up to the universe, you guys. That's very important. I think we had that on, oh yeah, look at surrender right here. I weave my magic and surrender to the universe. This one literally says surrender right on it. Look at that. Okay, guys. So make your wish and leave it up to the universe. You don't need to figure out how. Allow the opportunities to flow to you because they will. This is all about surrendering and just allowing, okay? So more messages, pile two. Let's see what comes up. We have the seeker. Look at that. So. The opportunities are literally going to be trickling down to you once you claim what it is that you want. Those, all those opportunities are trickling down to you and they're gonna start out small, but those small things make the biggest waves, okay? And then this is our last card from this deck. Let's see what we get. We have Speak Truth. So again, another card talking about speaking. So guys, literally, if you haven't yet, pause this video, make that wish. And if you already have, then great. Maybe do it again, doing it three times, three times magic charm, right? So speak truth to the universe. Speak what you want to the universe, claim it, and notice which direction that you're heading down. Because again, it can be dualistic. If you believe in yourself, you're feeding that. If you don't believe in yourself, you're feeding that. So choose which way that you want to go. So with that being said, Let's go ahead and take our Astro Dice. Let's get any last info on this reading for you guys. So pile number two. We have the moon, we have the ninth house, and we have Aries. Okay, so this is changing up those philosophies, focusing on your feelings, taking action on your feelings. The ninth house and Aries are both like fire sign. This is Sagittarius. This is ruled by Cancer over here, and this is obviously Aries. So this is about taking action on those emotions. When you have an emotion, you have a desire that's calling you towards something, which is Sag, it's calling you, pulling you towards something. Aries is about taking action, not even thinking twice about it, not thinking about what society says about it, not thinking about, you know, whatever the case may be, not thinking about what your, what your family thinks of you, what your friends think of you. This is about taking action on what it is that you are called to do and go towards. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys. Pile number two, hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe 
button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this. And if so, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. All right, group number three, if you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your guys' reading for your yes or no question. So let's hop right into it. All right, so group number three, here's what we got for you guys. So we have the star being reversed, ace of cups and knight of cups upright, the seven of cups upright, and then we have the nine of pentacles being reversed over here. So let's talk about this. I do also wanna say it's so interesting. I feel like aces, don't come up too often in readings, but whenever we do a yes or no reading, it's like we get aces out the wazoo, which is so interesting because whenever I do like yes or no myself, I always count aces as the answer to a yes or no. And when they're upright, it's a yes. When they're reversed, it's a no. And it's just so interesting that we've been getting aces in like every pile so far because it's such a direct clear answer so for you guys pile number three this answer would be yes we have the ace of cups up here this is overflowing abundance this is overflowing emotion there's so much emotion behind this current thing that you guys have especially since it's next to the knight of cups this is about taking an opportunity an opportunity coming towards you a lot of the times this can be about romance since we have a lot of cup things over here we just have a lot of water because the stars also um you know Lots of water, lots of water going on, okay? So, very interesting. Loving this so far, you guys. So whatever you guys asked about, this looks like there is a yes over here. Um, and it looks like this is also about getting something and it could even come in an unexpected way whenever we have the Seven of Cups as well. Um, and it, this also, I do wanna say, the Seven of Cups can sometimes also indicate a be careful what you wish for because you just might get it type of vibe. So sometimes it can indicate that. I just want you guys to know. But if you guys ever have doubts about something, it does look like you guys are getting an opportunity and it does look very positive, okay? It looks very positive, but it depends what energy that you put towards it and things like that, okay? So those are the immediate vibes that I'm getting over here. This looks like there is, um, even when you lack hope, even when you feel like something isn't going to happen for you, these are the cards saying, yes, it is going to happen. You just need to keep going towards it. Keep you know, on your path if you do want this thing to happen because it definitely looks like there's absolutely the potential for this to happen. So if you keep putting your energy towards this, if you keep filling that cup, I do see this coming towards you. But yes, this is about you continuing on that vibe. Um, and it does look like it'll come at a time when you kind of least expect it to. I keep getting this vibe of when you least expect it. It's coming when you least expect it. I just keep hearing that in my mind. So however that applies to you guys, I know this is a very general reading again because you know we're doing a yes or no um, per pile type of thing. So this needs to stay kind of general, but I'm definitely getting this vibe that this is coming when you least expect it. Um, and as long as you still desire this thing, keep putting your energy towards it and it will come into your life because it looks like the energy is already there. It's already flowing in, okay? So that is what it looks like at this moment. And then our next few cards that we have over here, let's talk about these. We have the ninth house, which is ruled by Sagittarius. And so this deals with us um, shooting our shot at something, going for it. And this can also talk about travel. Um, so if some of you guys are asking about that, this would be confirmation for that. So this also t uh, talks about philosophy, learning new things. This can talk, talk about, um, sorry, I'm stuttering so much. This can talk about higher learning studies and things like that. Seeking anything, seeking answers, seeking things like that. So um, whatever it is that you are seeking is definitely coming your way. My loves, pile number three. And then we also have fourth house of roots. This is ruled by cancer. So this is rooting yourself into what it is that you desire, making firm roots. It's interesting that we have the ninth house and the fourth house because this is about roots and this is about uprooting yourself. So there's a little bit of this vibe of feeling secure. So the fourth house is giving me this very secure vibe. Whereas the ninth house is like this go-getter, shoot your shot, let's go for it. But just make sure that you feel confident. Just plant yourself firmly and into your decision and then shoot that shot. So that's, what, that's the message that I'm hearing from this. And then we also have Leo, ooh, you guys. Okay, so Leo is about being really confident, putting yourself in the spotlight you know, all those like regular Leo things. So this could be about being in the spotlight for some of you. So some of you, if you guys are asking about a career thing, it does look like there's an opportunity over here to shine your talents, to shine what it is that you want to do. If this is about love, 
I mean, Leo literally says the lover on it, which I don't usually associate it with like, well, it kind of is the lover because it is the uh, rules the fifth house. It's kind of about love and stuff like that. So this could also be about love, getting yourself out there, being in the spotlight for that as well and people noticing you and things like that. Um, if it deals with beauty, Leo is such a good one um, with that. Whatever the case may be, whatever this is about, even if it's about traveling, this is about you know being able to really do that and that opportunity is coming for you guys, okay? So whatever this question is, it looks like that opportunity is definitely there as long as you keep feeding it, okay? And then so the next two cards, we have temple, which is home, which is interesting because the fourth house deals with home a lot. So I no longer search outside of myself for home. That's actually really powerful. I'm just gonna read that one more time. I no longer search outside of myself for home. So whatever it is that you guys are searching for, searching for if you guys are constantly seeking things, that's coming, okay, yeah, I'm totally hearing a message. If you guys have been seeking something for so long, it looks like it is absolutely coming into your foundation, into the physical, it's being rooted into your life. Whatever it is that you're seeking is now attaining roots in your life. Permanency, commitment, things like that, it is attaining roots. Whatever it is that you're seeking is growing roots to be lasting for a long time time. If you guys are thinking about, if you guys are asking about home life, if you guys are literally asking about buying a home or something like that, have this be confirmation that yes, whatever you're seeking, you're going to find the perfect place and you're going to attain it. So if this is asking about even, yeah, homes, things like that, I'm definitely getting a vibe for that. We got temple over here, home. I no longer search outside of myself for my home. This is confirmation that you're going to find the perfect place that you feel so homey at. Um, if this is about love, you're going to find that partner that you feel so homey and rooted with, committed. If it's a job, you're going to find the job where you feel at home and you maybe it's even working from home, things like that. Um, so definitely lots of vibes happening over here. Then we also have the cosmos ascend. I connect to oneness and expand my awareness. So you guys are definitely um, increasing. You're expanding in a really good way. So your abundance is definitely expanding. So to answer your question, abundance is definitely growing in your life. You are ascending to a higher level of consciousness, a higher vibe, higher um, good emotions. Like, you know, the the good emotions that you feel on the day-to-day -day are going to be increasing, so it's gonna be very beautiful, my loves. Ascend is such a good card. Ooh. And with that being said, let's shuffle this deck right here. Let's get a few cards from this one. Let's see what comes up. So pile three. We have Underworld right here. So you guys are literally just right now like going through that cocoon stage before transformation. That's what Underworld is all about. It's going through that cocoon stage to grow your wings, to do the ascend that you guys are about to do. And then we also have Get Wild up in here, okay? So for some of you guys, Sag Vibes, Get Wild. It is time to start seeking and searching and creating and taking action on what it is that you guys want in your life. This is about beginning that action stage. And then our last card in this deck, we have nature coming up. So yes, this one is getting into the alignment of where you belong, what belongs to you, what belongs for you, all that kind of fun jazz. So beautiful. Nature is also all about roots as well. So some of you guys, if you're asking about home or you're asking about foundation or security or commitment in any way, that is confirmation that that is absolutely coming for you. Then our next cards, we have humility over here. Okay, so I'm just gonna read this one before putting it down. So flowers are unaware of each other's beauty. They bloom regardless. Ooh, that is powerful. I will say these cards have so much wisdom in them. Oh my goodness. So flowers are unaware of each other's beauty. So stop comparing yourself. They bloom regardless. This is time for you to bloom regardless. Look at this underworld. You guys are getting ready to bloom. You're like that seed in the ground that is getting prepared to grow its wings, getting prepared to bloom. So yes, that's really, really powerful right there. Let's try to get one more over here and then let's go into our astro dice. We have risk. Okay, learn to grow. Guys, oh my God, I cannot believe it says that. Hold up, look at this card. Learn to grow wherever you are planted. Okay, there's abundance happening for you guys. This is all about growing those roots. We have so much root stuff coming up. You guys are being planted and this is time to 
go into that cocoon stage, grow those rings, blossom into that flower, stop comparing yourself, you are a beautiful flower regardless. I mean, anyone who stops by to smell the roses, they don't, <laughs> and we're not looking at them like, oh, this flower's better than that one. We're just like, oh my God, flowers, they're so beautiful, all of them are so beautiful. You are beautiful, you're perfect the way that you are. This is about planting, growing into that self-confidence, and then attaining all of what you are seeking and wishing for, my love, pile number three. So with that being said, let's go ahead and roll these astro dice to get any last info on this reading for you guys. We have the sixth house putting in some work. We have Mercury, which is ruled by Gemini and Virgo. We have the sixth house, which is ruled by Virgo. We also have Cancer over here, which we had the um, fourth house right here, which is very interesting. So with that being said, yes, it's time to put in the work to grow. This is about rooting yourself as well with Cancer. Mercury is about kind of seeking. We're seeking, we're finding, um, and things like that. So you guys are seeking where you really belong, where you want to really plant yourself, where you want to root yourself, where you want to create those routines. Um, and it's putting in that work. This is time to start putting in that work, putting in the movement and the momentum to find that area and to find that space. So that is what I'm seeing for you guys, pile number three. I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys wanna see more videos like this. And if so, I will see you guys in my next one, okay? Bye. All right, group number four, if you guys chose this pile, this is gonna be your yes or no question answer. So let's hop right into it. All right, so pile number four, you guys have a very interesting read over here. So we have the Queen of Swords upright, we have the Queen of Cups reversed, we have the Fool, the Moon upright, then we have the Ten of Pentacles being reversed, then we have the Five of Wands being reversed over here. So a um, couple things that I want to mention right away. So whatever you guys asked about, you have infinite potential in this question. You have infinite possibilities at the moment. I don't think that there's been enough energy um, that's been put towards this thing yet to create a solid, definite answer for you. It's still holds infinite possibilities. So whatever you're asking about, the, the answer is there's infinite possibilities here. Um, the moon that comes up is that the answer is still unknown. It's still in the dark. We haven't put enough energy towards it to illuminate it enough, to put enough energy there to have a definite, finite, physical, physical uh, outcome quite yet. So there hasn't been enough energy to make this physical outcome quite yet. So I think that you guys could still have it go in either direction. We have the Queen of Swords over here, which indicates that we need to put more thought towards this. And even though we have a lot of thought, we might not have put a lot of emotion towards it yet. We not, might have not connected it to a lot of um, emotion. It's more logical. It's more thinking based at the moment. And we haven't quite, yeah, we haven't put enough energy towards it for it to have this outcome quite yet. The Fool's really good though, because again, it talks about that infinite potential. Um, there could be really any outcome at this point. Then we do also have the Ten of Pentacles being reversed. So again, this is talking about the fact that it hasn't doesn't have a physical outcome quite yet. The Ten of Pentacles is Pentacles, physical, physical outcomes, the fact that it's reversed is letting me know that there's no physicality quite yet. There's no tangible reality that we've quit, uh, created quite yet in this scenario. And then with the five of wands of being reversed, it's kind of like maybe we've had clashing opinions before. Maybe we have like a desire of yes. And then we have a, um, uh, a desire that's contradictory that says no, or we're like holding ourselves back in a way. We could have like a contradictory, uh, contradictory emotions that are happening within us that are saying, oh yes, and then oh no, oh yes, oh no. And because of that, it's like you take one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. And because of that, you have not yet moved or created any sort of outcome or momentum yet because we're just kind of staying stagnant by saying yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Um, so it seems like the, the emotions here are still really unknown at the moment. They need more time to develop into something to create a more physical, tangible outcome in this scenario. So with that being said, let's talk about these next few cards. We have Libra, the idealist. We have the 11th house and we have the 8th house. Interesting. So this one is ruled by Aquarius and then this one is ruled by Scorpio. So Libra over here. Yes, I feel like you guys are still so balanced when we have Libra coming up. It is the scales. And so if we're talking about the scales in this particular scenario, it just seems like there isn't one outcome that outweighs the other quite yet. It's like it's so neutral. This is such a neutral answer right now. So Libra coming up would indicate that for this particular reading. And then we also have the 11th house. So 11th house, this is time for us to seek more, to go after more. This could be talking about um, uh, maybe friends could help in this situation. Sometimes that is an indication of the 11th house or being really innovative, 
innovative and creative. The 11th house is ruled by Aquarius, which is the sign of innovation, uh, random creativity, the unexpected, the unknown. So stepping into the unknown. So for you guys, maybe you need to step a little bit more into the unknown to create this new thing. So maybe you guys are still so stagnant in your, or um, still so planted and rooted in your current life that you haven't really created an outcome that is outside of that quite yet. So this is about getting outside of your comfort zone as well. Stepping into the unknown will create more of new things coming into your life because we cannot create the new without stepping into the new, right? It doesn't just randomly appear. If you keep taking the same actions and doing the same thing, it yields the same result. Your current, it's like adding one plus one and keep, and you're still adding it and adding it, hoping that it'll one day equal like a five or something. It's like, no, if you're putting in the same routines and same energy every day and doing the same actions every day, you're gonna keep getting the same result. One plus one equals two. If you want something new, it's time to step into the new. And then we have eighth house over here of intimacy. So it, it's not actually about necessarily intimacy, but it does also rule intimacy, but this is about endings and beginnings particularly. So the eighth house endings and beginnings, we need to end the old in order to begin the new, in order to even create a possibility of the new, even being tangible. We have to end the old. We have to stop doing the old. So change up something in your routine. If you want something new to happen, change up one thing in your routine tomorrow, or even today, depending on when you're watching this, if it's still early, change up one thing before you go to bed, do one thing that's totally different. And that will be the stepping stone of creating newness. Then we also have the shining star glow. I no longer dim my light. I shine bright for all to see. Ooh, okay. I want to let that be its own message. I can, I, oh, sorry. I no longer dim my light. So this is about you no longer standing in your own way. I shine bright for all to see. No more caring about other people's opinions or thoughts on you. This is about you and your life, your desires and your wants. Then we have the storyteller intention. I am the narrator of my life. You are the narrator and the creator of your life. It is time for you to make your own story and make a new story. This, this particular pile, you guys, that you guys chose, this is about you creating your own story and stepping into that new direction. So with that being said, let's take our next deck of cards let's shuffle these and see what comes up for you guys so pile number four yes or no question okay so we have patience everything can be uh, can be accomplished at nature's pace be patient you guys it doesn't need to happen overnight most things never ever happen overnight and the good things never ever happen overnight this takes a lot of work and from the outside it can sometimes seem like people get things overnight but trust me that's not the case <laughs> people are usually working at it for so long behind the scenes before it looks like they actually have a takeoff and then we also have risk learn to grow wherever you are planted so if you plant yourself somewhere new we don't need to have a bunch of anxiety around it. Learn to grow wherever you are planted. Learn to grow in new soil. And once you do that, then you'll begin to welcome in new change in your life. And you'll be, begin to make your own story and be the storyteller of your life because you won't be scared to plant yourself somewhere new. Okay, and then we also have learn. Take a lesson from the owls. Deeply observe the night and you'll become a little wiser by the day. So pick up something new. Learn something new. Let's do something new. Let's add in... Let's add in some new energy in your guys' life. Okay, pile number four, this is time to welcome in some new stuff, do some new things. Let's change it up. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and shuffle this deck right here. Let's see what else we can get for you guys. Pile four, the universe. Look at we tying the strings to your dreams of what you want, being your own puppet master, okay? You calling the shots, you deciding how you want to navigate your life, okay? So if you're the puppet, you get to decide not don't give your strings away to your friends' hands or your family's hands and let them control you if, if you're the puppet you are the storyteller so it's time for you to control your own strings okay all right there we go here's our last few cards that we're gonna have this is a lot but we're just gonna go with it we're gonna do it so let's see we have boundaries this is about creating some new boundaries in your life and also getting beyond your own boundaries. If you've had a shell on for so long, it's about getting past that as well and creating new, better boundaries in different areas that actually serve you rather than keep you locked away and safe. 
Um, okay, so then we also have death over here. This is going through change. This is endings and beginnings. This is what's ruled by Scorpio, which we have the eighth house over here. So this is making so much sense. This is about ending the old stuff, creating a new beginning, okay? And then we have the wildling. So here we have the shears. We're cutting the old stuff that we're so used to, cutting the old habits, patterns, and routines. We're getting a little bit wild. We're getting outside of our comfort zone. So now is the time for you guys. Let's get wild, okay? And then dare to dream without the risk of daring to dream. It, ta it takes, you have to get past your fears in order to dream. You have to get past your fears in order to take action on those dreams and actually create them into a reality, right? So this is about stepping outside of that comfort zone and just going for it, okay? Pile number, pile number four. With that being said, let's go ahead and roll these Astro Dice to get any last info on this reading for you guys. All right, looks like we have the sixth house, Saturn and Aquarius. It's so funny because I think the or no, we've just had, yeah. I was gonna say, I think pile, the pile previous had similar ones, but they actually didn't. <laughs> I'm just thinking about something completely different. Okay, so Saturn, sixth house, Aquarius. Okay, whatever your current patterns and routines are, your current traditions, Aquarius is stepping in for you guys to be able to change that up. And the traditional ruler of Aquarius is actually Saturn, um, but Saturn's very interesting because Saturn's all about traditions and stuff like that, whereas Aquarius is all about breaking free and breaking out of those. So now it's time to change up your patterns, habits, and routines and get out of your comfort zone. Okay, pile number four, because that's the only way that your dreams are going to become a reality. That is what I'm seeing for you guys, pile four. Hope you guys enjoyed this reading. If you did, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you guys want to see more videos like this. And if so, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. All right, so group number five. If you guys chose this pile, this is going to be your answer to your yes or no question. So let's hop right into it. All right, this is super, super interesting pile number five because as I've said in like pretty much all of the previous piles so far is that whenever we get an ace, aces are the answers to yes or no's. They are the direct answers to yes or no questions, which is super interesting. So we've had like every single ace so far other than in one of the piles, because again, there's five piles, only four aces, but we've had aces come up and I don't have aces come up too often in readings, but like whenever I do a yes or no pick a card, it seems like they just, they pop out because they are the direct answers to yes or no question. So the ace of wands when it is reversed is a um, no off the bat, but it looks like in this case, it's more of a delay than a direct no. So it really depends on the context of your own question um, because sometimes we seek um, a, the answer to be no. We actually desire the answer to be no. Um, so for some of you guys, if you're desiring the answer to be no, well, it is no. If you guys are desiring a yes, it does look like there's a good outcome regardless, but it does look like there's some sort of transition involved in here. So it does look like this is about kind of coming back to something. So let's, let's just talk about the cards that we have for a second before I get too off track over here, before I get too ahead of myself. We have the Eight of Cups over here being reversed. Then we have the Six of Swords upright. We have the Ace of Wands being reversed. We have the Four of Pentacles being reversed. Then we have the Page of Wands upright. And then we have the World being reversed. So first off, let's start from the beginning. The Eight of Cups being reversed. This is about coming back to something um, and choosing to come back to something either because we have unfinished business with it. And usually it's because we have like some sort of unfinished emotional karma with this certain thing that we're coming back to. But then this looks like we're leaving it. So it does look like in the past, there's been maybe a pattern of coming or going or kind of being like, should I stay or should I go? Should I let this thing go? Should I move on? What do I do? Do I come back to it? Do I work on it? Or do I just fully let it go? This is about fully letting that something go. This Ace of Wands, this is about um, also kind of coming back to it in order to finish that karma because this is a kind of resisting a new beginning, but then it does look like we do have this sort of new beginning over here. So it looks like there's something that we, we need to finish up, essentially. And then this Four of Pentacles right here, it is reversed over here, and this requires us to let go. Let's let go. This is all about letting go. So for you guys, what I would say is let go of this because there's something that's not quite on the same page as you. It's not feeling like, if you guys are questioning it so much, it's clearly not exactly meeting eye to eye. It's not exactly working out. This is about being able to let go. 
Page of Wands is about seeking something new. Now we're going in this direction, okay? This is all the, the seeking something new. If we're walking in this direction, we're headed in the past, like the Eight of Cups over here, walking in the past. These cards right here are all about walking into the new, making a, some sort of transition, focusing on something new, starting a new beginning, things like that. So there is something that we are uh, walking towards, but I would say the answer to your question, the answer to your yes or no question is a no. And this is about sticking to your desires, your vision, what you have in mind for you, stick to that vision. And then with the world being uh, reversed, this is about something that's incomplete. It's not quite complete yet. So there is something that's like, it's so weird. It's like you guys are hanging on like onto the edge of something where it's like you guys are basically done with it, but for some reason the new beginning is still being resisted somehow, or you still have karma, you're still supposed to work with this certain thing that's in your life right now in order to learn or complete something. Maybe you guys are needing to complete something here, um, but it does look like you really have to hold your vision in mind, if that's making sense. I hope this is making sense so far, pile number five. But yeah, the direct answer would be no, and then we're still hanging on to complete something. We're trying to complete something, so we're hanging on to complete it, but then there's a new beginning afterwards with the Page of Wands, okay? So that is what I'm seeing off the bat right here. Our next few cards that we have, we have three cards here. Um, we have Conjunction, Taurus, and we also have the Second House, which is ruled by Taurus, which is so interesting. So let's talk about this Conjunction right now. So this is you being together with something. This is about you having to stick to something for now. So it could be a job that you guys aren't quite ready to leave yet financially, so you're hanging on to it, but there's a transition that's absolutely going to happen. So um, yeah, it could be something along the lines of that, that a job that you just need to hang on to right now because there's kind of unfinished business. Maybe you can't let go of it quite yet, but you do know that you are going to let go of it. There is absolutely this new beginning, or this could be talking the exact same scenario, but with a relationship, for example, or something like that, right? And so conjunction means that we're still connected to this certain thing, okay? So it's it's the combination. Conjunction is when two planets, two planetary cosmic bodies are at the same degree and same sign of the zodiac, that is a conjunction. Um, and even if they're like within the same like five degrees, 10 degrees, it's still technically a uh, conjunction. So this is combines with, enhances, strengthens, joins forces. So you're still like uh, joined with something at the moment, but it does look like there's a new beginning coming your way later on, okay? Um, and then we also have Taurus, the bombshell. So whoo, um, Taurus is the physicality. This is about being abundant. This is about being comfortable as well. So this can also talk about finances. So this could be a career question that you guys aren't ready to leave because maybe financially it's still supporting you, things like that. So second house in Taurus does talk about your finances or just abundance in general and the way that you're feeling with that. So this is about you coming together with the abundance that you deserve. What do you deserve? Um, what is the quality versus quantity versus you know all those different things versus how quick it is so quickness quality and quantity um what are the most important to you right so thinking about those things maybe it's uh, better to not jump into something right away. Maybe it's better to take your time with something. Maybe it's better to work on the quality of something, you know, things like that. So Taurus reminds us of those specific things as well as the second house since they're basically the same, <laughs> the same deal over here, but it does rule over your finances or your quality of life or your, your feeling of abundance and things like that or something physical, right? And so with that being said, let's go ahead and take our next two cards that we have over here. So we have birth, the universal midwife. So this is about creating a new beginning, a, a new idea. Okay, so I birth fruitful and sacred assignments. So right now this is about thinking and conjuring up a new idea and a new pathway. Then we, oh, and then we have rebirth. We have birth and then rebirth. So out of the darkness into the light, this is a rebirth. So it could even be a rebirth of the old thing and viewing it in a new way and creating it to be new. Okay, so it could be like a whole renewal of something that we have going on over here, maybe a business contract, maybe a job, maybe we're renewing something, maybe it's a relationship, maybe we're renewing vows with somebody, you know, something along the lines of that. This is this could be some sort of renewal into a new direction. Maybe that's why we have all of this yes and no kind of conjunction of yes and no happening over here, because maybe it's just some sort of renewal for some of you guys. Um, something along the lines of that, or finishing up karma before moving on. 
maybe it's something like that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take these cards right here to get some more info for you guys. So pile five, your yes or no question. We have ascension. So you guys will be moving up the ladder. That is for sure. Whatever this question deals with, you are moving up the ladder. Your abundance will be increasing. Your security um, and things like that will be increasing. We are moving above and beyond things that no longer serve us, okay? And then our next two cards that we have over here, we have reflect and fate. So let's reflect. You're not fated by anything, just so you guys know, but this is the cosmic egg over here, which talks about the birth of something once again. So you guys are fated to start some sort of new beginning here, okay? And then we also have reflect. So what are you feeling inside? Again, this is a general reading, so you're gonna to have to see how this really applies to you right now. Reflect on this, really see how this is exactly applying to you and your situation. It is a general reading, but hopefully I'm trying to get as specific as possible here, so hopefully it's resonating for you guys. So with that being said, let's also take these cards. Let's see what we get. So pile five, let's see. We have the woods, be like the woods, calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. Be like the woods, calm, soothing, mysterious, and full of life. So now it's time to chase after the things that make you full of life, you guys. This is time to be full of life. Okay, you don't need to know everything, but you can still be full of life is what that card is saying. You don't need to know it all. You can be mysterious and still be full of life. Life can still be mysterious and give you full life. Then we also have cleanse. So wash away your weary spirit clean and take a walk in the golden glades. So cleanse, this is about releasing old stuff, releasing old karma, releasing old things that just no longer, no longer serve you. So yes, we are doing a bit of a cleanse. We're doing a bit of a clean out of the closet, basically. Our last two cards before the Astro Dice, we have change. Falling leaves do not signify the end, but the beginning of a fruitful season. Look at that, that fits in with this reading so well. Falling leaves do not signify the end. So just because something is going wrong doesn't signify the end, but the beginning of a fruitful season. So whenever we go through fall and leaves are falling away, or, or even, you know, when you take like, um, like uh, trees that bear fruit, for example, and they blossom into a flower, but then those flower petals start going away, just because those flower petals are falling away, it doesn't mean that, the, that you're losing out. It actually means that the fruit is about to blossom. <laughs> Literally, it means that the fruit is coming. <laughs> so that's actually such a, good, such a good metaphor for this pile. Then we have, there is a melody to be heard in the deepest parts of the woods, if only we listen. So there is answers, if only you listen. There is inspiration, there is pathways for you, if only you open up to listen to that. Okay, my love, so that is what I'm seeing over there. With that being said, let's go ahead and take our Astro Dice to get any last info on this reading for you guys. So we have Venus, we have the eighth house of endings and beginnings, and then we have Capricorn. Whew. Okay, so for some of you guys, this definitely could deal with work. For some of you guys, this definitely could deal with romance. We have all the above different options over here, but this is endings and beginnings. So the eighth house, yes, the flower petals are falling away, but that, me that means the fruit is on its way. The flower petals are falling away, but the fruit is on its way. That actually rhymes. That's a great saying. Quote me on it, guys. Just quote me on it now. <laughs> but yeah, Venus also deals with the fruit being coming. This is about a fruitful time. This is about abundance and things like that. And Capricorn is about the, the dedication to that vision, to that dream, to that desire. Venus is also ruled by Taurus. We have lots of Taurus happening over here. This deals a lot with your abundance. So just because certain abundance is falling away, just because you're spending a lot of money right now, it could be mean the actual, it could signify the beginning of a very fruitful season just because things are falling away. We have to get rid of the old in order to prepare for the new. And sometimes even when you know a forest gets a fire and we have a bit of a forest fire, it actually adds nutrients into the soil and we have greener trees than we could have ever had before. So it's the forest's natural way of of renewing itself and so even when things are going wrong going uh, wrong it is actually the indication of a new fruitful season coming your way and that's kind of the message that i'm really hearing for you guys pile number five so even if certain things fall out of your life and fall away or aren't working out it can actually sometimes indicate a fruitful season on its way and for you guys in this particular case we have that message coming up here in, um 
here so many times. So this would indicate for you guys that this is your message for your particular question that you asked here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this reading pile number five. If you did, don't forget to give it a huge thumbs up for me. Hit that subscribe button down below if you want to see more videos like this. And if so, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.